In this video, I'm going to show you how to blur the background of an image so that the subject really stands out. Hi there and welcome to the video. So as you can see, I've already got an image loaded here, which you can download from a link in the description box below. And it's a photographer against the busy city background. Now, we want to isolate him more from the background and make him stand out by blurring the background even more. It is blurred already now straight from the camera as you can see with some natural out of focus areas but it's still very busy to the eye and I want to just take that stage further. So we're just going to start by duplicating the background layer twice. So that's Control or Command J depending if you're on a PC or a Mac. Let's do that twice. We'll call the top layer, let's rename it, call the top layer Subject. Just keep organized and the layer below I'm just going to call BG for background blur, background blur. Now what I want to do now is make a selection of the subject, so in this case the photographer. Now I'm going to use the pen tool for this but you can use the lasso tool or whatever method you're comfortable of to make a selection of the photographer. So I'm going to click on the pen tool here, I'm going to go up and just make sure at the top it's on path and not shape because Photo P defaults the pen tool to shape which is kind of annoying because it's used for a path most of the time and then also if you're using the pen tool just make sure that this mode is set to subtract to make sure that it honors gaps in between other areas otherwise it'll just have one big filled in selection so what I'm going to do now is just start making a path around the photographer's outline now this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to use a pen tool but as I said, use whatever method you feel comfortable with. You have to be fairly accurate, but it doesn't have to be completely super accurate. If you're a few pixels out here and there, it's not going to make a huge difference. A few moments later. Okay, so now as you can see, I've got a completed path around a subject. And to turn this into a selection, you can either drag it down to this selection icon at the bottom, or you can just simply press Control or Command and then just click on the icon of the um, path itself and it will turn into a live selection. So now we want to go back to the layers panel and on this subject layer at the top we're going to now click on the layer mask icon to transfer this or should I say convert this selection into a layer mask. If we turn the other two layers off you can see the photographer is now cut out on his own on the top and that's the, the important stage in the first stage in making this happen. I'm going to go into the mask properties here by just clicking on the layer mask and then going up to properties mask. I'm just going to feather this a little bit because as you can see it was quite sharp. I just want to feather it a little bit, maybe 0.8 there and um, just get the edges a little bit smoother and that will just help when we work on the background. So we've now selected our subject, we've isolated him and now what I'm going to do is a couple of steps on the black background blur layer just to make this right. Now we can't just blur this straight away because it will actually take pixels of the photographer that are on the layer underneath and actually blur them outwards and we'll get this horrible halo. So what we need to do to fix this is whilst you're on the BG blur layer, control or command and click on the layer mask above to load a selection of the cutout photographer but we're bearing in mind we loaded the selection from there but we're still on the background blur um, layer and now what we're going to do is go up to the select menu modify expand and I'm going to do this between it depends on the image but for this something between three and five pixels so I'm going to leave it at four click OK now this is just taking that selection we've just loaded and just increased it out slightly to capture a few more pixels, make sure it captures enough pixels. And now what we want to do, while well, it's still live, the selection's still live, we're going to go to Edit, Fill, and the fill type, we're going to change the content aware and click OK. This might take a few moments, but basically what we're doing is on the layer we're going to blur the background on, we're trying to use content aware fill to just get rid of a lot of the information that would be the photographer underneath and replace him with bits of background which means that when we blur this layer it's going to be a lot more it's going to be a lot of cleaner result so here we go if I just if I just um, reveal that layer 
you can see it still looks messy, but the main dark pixels of the photographer are gone. And this is important because it will help us get a cleaner result. So now we've done that step, we're going to turn the BG blur background into a smart object. And this is just so when we're blurring it in a moment, we can always come back and tweak the blur as many times as we like. So now we just need to decide how and how much we're going to blur. So go up to the filter menu, go to blur, you've got a lot of options here. Now we'd normally use this Gaussian blur, but for this I like to use lens blur just because it's a little bit more natural looking and also it has a built in option to add a little bit of noise back into the shot to make it look a bit more realistic. So for this, the only properties we're interested in is really is the shape here and radius. Now all this will do is the lower size, like a triangle, it's like the aperture shape, um, will give you a little bit rougher results. Let me put it on triangle and I'll show you. If I drag the radius right up, this is going to go too much now, but it's just so you can see what's happening. Let me just drag it up here. Now if I change that triangle to octagon, say, which is on the other end, a lot of sides, it should give a smoother result. There we go, things are a bit more blended. I quite like it somewhere in between, so I'm going to go hexagon. And I'm not going to go that, that much blurred, I had it because it's a bit too much. You don't want to blur it too much because then it gets into the realms of looking a bit abstract. So let's say somewhere around there. I'm going to go down to our noise, because as you can see the subject it's got quite a bit of grain on him and the background just looks super smooth so it looks a little um just looks a little fake so we're going to go to monochromatic on this and i'm just going to add a little bit of noise you want to just try and match it roughly to how much is on the subject you can always come back and tweak it later something like that's good and click okay 